So it's lovely uh, to be joined on this podcast by uh, B- Bishop Jake Owensby. Uh, uh, Jake, you're in Louisiana. Uh, tell me a bit yes. about yourself and about your diocese. Well, I am in the Diocese of Western Louisiana, and I'll begin by saying that the name of our diocese uh, it can mislead you a bit. Um, if you think of Louisiana as a boot, uh, our sister diocese, Louisiana, is just the toe of that boot, mm. uh, and we are um, we are the rest of the boot. So geographically, we're 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 large, mm. but we don't have the sexy city of New Orleans mm. in our in our diocese. We are primarily rural. Uh, we have two uh, largish cities: Shreveport uh, and Lafayette both over a hundred thousand and everything else is smaller. Mm. Um, half of our congregations are f- under 50 on a Sunday mm-hmm. and, and much of the rural expanse of my diocese is experiencing out migration. So right. that's, yeah, yeah. It's um, well, you know, in the United States, generally urban areas are drawing people away from rural areas, jobs, uh, education, uh, other kinds of opportunities, bring people into the cities. And and what kind of uh, numbers of clergy and uh, churches do you have in your diocese? Ours is a relatively small diocese. So we have 43 congregations uh, and, and roughly the same number of active clergy, although we have half again as many uh, retired clergy or non-parochial mm. clergy. Mm. Uh, it's um, I refer to it, especially since our next door neighbor is Texas, which is the sort of the diocese that ate the world. <laughs> it's very <laughs> large and dynamic. Uh, we're sort of a mom and pop shop of, mm. of a diocese. Mm. Mm. That's lovely. And, and how long have you been there, Jake? I am in my 10th year as as diocesan, and before that, I served as the dean of the cathedral in Shreveport. So you will know the diocese really, really well, yeah. Yes, I do. Uh, And in Louisiana in general, but especially in my part of Louisiana, relationship is everything. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ministry is not going to happen. Uh, if you don't personally have a connection to to folks. Mm. And to be honest with you, they all seem to be related for crying out loud. (laughs) Either that or their families have been connected for generations. And so there's a lot of relationship and relationship building that goes on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're part of this uh, small group of bishops preparing for Lambeth or experiencing a Lambeth a conversation over the summer and it's been so moving it's been a very moving group to be part of but so moving to hear you talk both about the journey through covid over the last few months and and of course about the extreme weather events you've had uh, over the summer and particularly the hurricanes which i think you said last time we met the three hurricanes had passed through or near your diocese which just seems yes. extraordinary well, and they were major hurricanes. Mm. Uh, they, uh, in, in, in Louisiana, um, people will stay put for even tremendous hurricanes. Category five, for example, mm. my son lives farther south in Louisiana and stayed put uh, for Hurricane Laura, which was just about uh, a category five. Mm. I, my advice was to leave, but you know how it is with adult uh, sons. Mm-hmm. At any rate, um, yes, we had three major hurricanes in the space of one year. And uh, in addition to that, an ice storm uh, in, in the midst of all that, which is very unusual mm-hmm. in Louisiana. And we are still uh, focused on the long-term recovery uh, from hurricane damage, as well as uh, taking care of evacuees from Ida, which primarily hit that uh, New Orleans, Baton Rouge area in the toe of the boot, mm. uh, why those folks came over here and we're ministering to them and caring for them. You know, I, I have to tell you, Stephen, before and during hurricanes, I didn't really understand that hurricane recovery is as long term as it is. We will be doing this for years. 
Really? Uh, mm-hmm. Oh, yes. There are still people from Laura and Delta, those were last year, mm-hmm. uh, who, who have unmet needs. Their, their, their roofs are not repaired. Mm-hmm. Uh, their floors and subflooring uh, have been destroyed wow. by weather, and they're, they're walking around holes in, in their floors. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we are partnering with not only other denominations, but with uh, nonprofit organizations to uh, get case management done, mm. to help people connect to federal funds that are available, and then to plug the, the gap or fill the gap of funding to, to bring the repairs that are needed. And in the meantime, feed people, help people get places. Mm. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I'm going on and on about this, but I'll say one other thing. You know, it's not just buildings that have been destroyed, it's businesses. Mm-hmm. And so people's employment, uh, it's not the same as it was prior. The, the, uh, the recovery time for some of our local economies will be a decade in mm-hmm. the making. So it's, it, we're going to do some heavy lifting around all of that. And COVID, for crying out loud, we all have really been pressed hard by that haven't Mm. we um we've uh, been very fortunate in certain respects in that at least in the churches people have been um cooperative about taking the sensible measures that Mm. that needed to be taken Mm. uh it's not going to tell you you know there I, i hope this doesn't sound pollyannish but there is a silver lining we leaned rapidly into virtual connections to people yes. yeah. in, in our area. And mm. we've experienced church growth mm. as a result of that. Mm. Now, how that will play out in the future, we're all still wondering about it, yeah, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we're much the same. But, but um, I think watching uh, our whole diocese move everything online in a really mm-hmm. short period of time it's one of the most remarkable things i've ever witnessed really yeah uh, yes yes it it was it was it was a quantum leap wasn't it yeah, i just yeah. it was amazing yes yeah, yeah. Uh, and 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 we've all learned to have these conversations at some depth in ways that we i think didn't have the skills to do before so that that also has been quite remarkable so yes uh, it has interesting so, so we're reading at uh, one Peter together in preparation for the Lambeth conference, and uh, and I I confess to our small group last time that I find it a hard letter to love. But over the summer, I've been digging into it, and I'm doing a series of podcasts now, as you know, of which this will form part. Um, as you've been reading the letter, and especially the first chapter, which is uh, uh, the reflection I, I did last week. Uh, what are the themes that have emerged for you to really help the church where we are now? You know, I, I, I'm going to begin by confessing the same thing you confessed, which mm-hmm. is to say, First Peter is not the first place I would have previously gone mm-hmm. for inspiration and, and guidance. Uh, and uh, I, I will also confess, I got a little ahead of you last week I, and, and, and jumped into our lesson for coming up this week. And, uh, but, it, you know, it's all still... Uh, for me, about being the light of Christ in the world, mm. uh, in a world that is uh, aching, in a world that is confined by fear, mistrust, anger, greed, selfishness, mm. Uh, mm. and being liberators in, mm. in that world, uh, following Christ, not with our words and doctrines alone, but with, with what we are doing out mm-hmm. in the world. Mm-hmm. I had a, it, I keep being reminded of something my old church history professor said to us uh, in class. And I think, it, I think it goes for the church as a whole, not just uh, priests in training. Of course, that was years ago. Mm-hmm. Don uh, Armand Trout used to say, people are looking for Jesus and all they're going to get is you. Uh, and in a way, that's true about the church, isn't it? Uh, I think that that uh, P- First Peter is telling us that we live in a world that doesn't exactly look Jesusy, mm-hmm. uh, and we're we're the reminder 
that there is God at work mm. and, and, and God wins, you know, mm. and I don't mean in a sense of violent battle. I mm. mean, in the sense of the power of love to transform, to heal, to liberate. Uh, and, you know, I have to admit, Stephen, for the life of me, I would never have thought about that at first Peter before mm. we began to study together uh, in preparation for Lambeth. So it's, it, and I, you know, the, the videos that come along with the, the, the commentary as well, mm. they have been really eye-opening for mm. me. I'm so grateful to the group of scholars that have gathered to encourage me to look again at a book that I hadn't given the, the concentration that it deserved. Mm. 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 And I, I've been challenged as I've uh, done some visiting around the diocese and, and um, been uh, testing out uh, some of these ideas in, in 1 Peter, very powerfully again by this notion of aliens and exiles and, um, mm. and what it means. And, and I think one of the things I've discovered through the pandemic uh, is that I've, I've actually become too content and too at home in in the world as it is and i think one of the things one peter is doing is is nurturing that sense of discontentedness with the world as it is a longing for something more which is i guess the kind of seedbed of hope really so so yes. asking myself the question am i really seeing myself as an alien and an exile has been a really powerful transformative thing that so resonates with me. Uh, it, I was uh, just looking at that this morning as well and uh, uh, asking multiple questions from different dimensions. One uh, is, and can I, uh, in this context anyway, a white uh, cisgender uh, older guy who yeah. is in a position of some power, right? Mm -hmm. And immense privilege. Mm -hmm. How, how can I really um, honestly think of myself as alien in exile, mm. especially wow. since uh, I live adjacent to, I mean, literally adjacent to uh, people who are on the exact opposite end of mm. the economic spectrum, mm. uh, those who, who are the heirs of slavery uh, and, and, and migrants who are being tossed into detention. Mm -hmm. just because they're seeking refuge from violence in their own mm -hmm. countries. And I, I look at that and, and that discomfort that I have mm -hmm. about my own position, uh, as well as the realization, uh, the uh, uncomfortable realization that you uh, uh, expressed. Um, well, how, how comfortable have you gotten with your position there, mm -hmm. fella? Uh, mm -hmm. and, and are you being Christ-like? Yeah, in yeah. that, in that, in that change, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and Jake, what can we uh, pray for uh, as people listen to this podcast across our diocese and pray for your diocese? What what can we pray for for you? Thank you. I uh, several things, if if you don't mind my mm -hmm. it's, uh, heaping up the prayer requests. Mm -hmm. uh, one uh, is resilience and grit. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have to keep going. We, and, and I think that comes from hope. Mm. I think pray for hope for us. Uh, and, and so um, th that will cover any number of things that need prayer here. Mm. Income inequality, mm. racism, sexism, classism, all of those things, those isms are structural challenges, structural injustices that that we're um, that we're leaning into, mm. but they re they require more than than my time on this earth. Mm. Mm. We we need to persevere uh, to to be about Christ's work. Mm. So that's really, it, it, yeah, that's what I would say. The bullseye is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and, and what are the things that are particularly uh, giving you joy? Which is again a big sort of theme in one Peter. Chapter one, is isn't it? It is. It is. Wow. You know, I'll tell you something. Uh, it's always people for me. Yeah. Um, the uh, the truth. Of, well, it, it, well, actually, I'll say nature as well. But let me let me first say the people of Louisiana uh, are uh, certainly lovable to me. Mm. Uh, 
uh, we uh, are we are people with grit and resilience. Mm. Uh, they they come in all sizes and shapes, income levels and, and age levels. Mm. Uh, and so it's the people that give me the greatest joy. They're very loving. Uh, they're just and their food is terrific. Uh, mm. you, you, it, it really, really is. I have to tell you, it's certainly very good. Yeah, it, it, yes, it is. And it's yeah. well deserved. I have yeah. to tell you, uh, keeping uh, keeping one's uh <laughs> belt size the same can be a challenge yeah. but it's it's still right uh and it you may see the uh the zoom background that i've got there i mm. purposely chose a bayou picture mm. um you know when you say swamp it sort of sounds dreary i suppose but the bayou eco ecosystem as well as the farmland ecosystem here and the and the forests because i live adjacent to a huge uh pine forest mm. um the, the natural beauty of God's creation mm, mm. Uh, is, is healing to me mm. every time. Mm, mm. Uh, sensing this great, vast cosmos of which I am a part mm, mm. because of God's love for me and all of it. Mm, mm. It gives me great joy. Uh, and, and I can't leave out one more thing, uh, you know, in addition to family, because one has to say that my dog, Gracie, yeah. is my buddy. Uh, and so she uh, she reminds me that uh, being in the present yeah. is probably the wisest thing we can we yeah. can do. Yeah. Very wise. Very wise. And, and just a, a one last question is we, we don't know yet, of course, how many of us. We'll be able to gather in person in, in Lambeth yes. next year. We're still waiting to hear. But but uh, what's your hope for that time? You know, I uh, one is the uh, a profound mm. sense of unity in Christ. Mm. I've been telling congregations on all of my visitations the power of that. Mm. Uh, the the power of being one across languages cultures uh theological and ethical differences mm. is uh energizing to me uh, but i have to tell you selfishly stephen uh, i want to be stretched mm. i i want to be stretched by those who know depths of christ that i don't know mm. perspectives of christ that i don't know and to be held accountable for for my own shortcomings in a way that only the other can only those that that are different from me can. Mm. So I, I mean, I'm wanting a lot, I know, uh, but I have, I do have a lot of hopes around yeah, that. Yeah, that's fantastic, wonderful. Jake, thank you for taking time out of your morning to uh, record this uh, podcast and uh, love and prayers uh, from Oxford to you and to uh, your diocese. And uh, I look forward to seeing you uh, at um, our next group meeting uh, and also God willing at the Lambeth Conference next year. Thank you so much. Well, my pleasure in Louisiana love back your way. Thank you. Thank you.